President Biden insisting the way he got out of Afghanistan was a, quote, extraordinary success. But the American people disagree. The commander in chief's poll numbers nosediving after the chaotic exit from Kabul. A new national poll out with this headline, quote, Biden's awful August approval sinks on Afghan pullout. Large majority call Afghan war a failure. 43 percent of Americans approve of the job he's doing. That's the lowest in that poll since Biden took office. And as the president looks to push past Afghanistan, the media is ignoring a big development. The major networks largely avoiding Biden's phone call with then Afghan President Ghani, where President Biden reportedly pressured the Afghan leader to say the Taliban wasn't winning. All right, guys, it's Friday. Well, we've got some dark topics to discuss. Um, Joey, what do you make of this uh, and the president calling this an extraordinary success? You know, it's not about blaming Biden for the crisis. We can talk about that. It's about being a leader. You know, strong leaders make bad decisions. Every good leader will make a bad decision, maybe a series of them, but they lead through it. And when as a leader, President Biden cowers and he blames Afghans and he blames Trump and he blames his own generals, he says, the buck stops with me. I took the consensus decision. You know how you kind of pivot right out of that. You don't look like a strong leader. You yell your way into a victory speech. You just don't show the American people that you truly understand the gravity that is felt in this house that we call America. It's not just the fact that we pulled out of Afghanistan. It's not just the fact that we have a 20 year war that we get the claim failure on. It's the posture. You have a Marine general sit there and say the Taliban were our partners. You have the entire administration saying one thing and almost doing another. And you've got about 22 million veterans that sit back and look at that and go, wow, were we betrayed? What happened here? You have to understand the tone and tenor of the men and women that fought this war in order to end it. And he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And one thing that most politicians, Sean, do understand is poll numbers. Right. And there are a lot of bad ones today for the president on a number of issues. But overall, this seems to be dragging him down. We did see his poll numbers were coming down with other worries about the economy and other things before this um, chaotic withdrawal and the loss of 13 service members and others still critically wounded. Yeah. So, I mean, I think what happens is I mean, you have a situation where the media has basically had its back. Right. So whether it was the border or COVID or inflation, the media really hasn't reported those stories. But in a 20-year war in Afghanistan where we've spent so much blood and treasure, the media had to report the story. (laughs) And so as they report it, they see that this is an utter failure from the president. They see 13 service members die. They see billions of dollars left in our equipment. And I think to Joey's point, when you look at leadership, you want leaders to actually change course with the facts on the ground. So if if you're getting from the Afghan president that you have almost 15,000 international terrorists coming into the country, the Taliban is surging, They would expect the president to change course, maybe keep Bagram Air Base, maybe bring a few more troops in so we can get Americans out. That's exactly right. That's that's the right approach that any leader would have. Even Donald Trump, if you recall, he wanted to get out of Afghanistan at the end of 2020. And because the facts were changing on the ground, he kept pushing that date back because he was a leader looking at facts, not at perception, as Joe Biden wanted the Afghan government to do, to to, to send a perception to the world as opposed to the reality. Well, and there's been a conversation, Jessica, over the last couple of weeks, whether seeing how terribly things were going, the president would change course, um, as Sean talks about. But reporting today from inside the administration says he does surround him with pe- himself with people that have differing viewpoints so they can Definitely. challenge him, but that it's exceptionally hard to change his mind once he's decided this is the course. It's one of the advantages of getting someone in office that you've known for 50 years. They're consistent. And Joe Biden has been stubborn, especially on foreign policy, since he entered professional D.C. public life. Uh, So it isn't surprising. He is surrounded by virtue of the fact that so many members of the Obama administration uh, were played an integral role, obviously, in continuing this fight in Afghanistan and feel very passionately about that. Uh, Worked with Afghans who are still left over there, who helped us as translators, who fought alongside us, and have been quite outspoken, whether they've deleted those tweets that they put up or those Instagram (laughs) posts. I mean, there are members of the State Department, DOD, who have all expressed displeasure at this. And to Johnny Joey's point, I think there's something really interesting in the polling because there is that dichotomy that too many politicians miss, which is that Americans are smart enough to understand how hard these issues are. So while his approval is sunk down into the low 40s for the first time in his presidency, and I would add that that's, you know, it doesn't make him a huge outlier in presidential history, you still have 65 to 70 percent of Americans who think this was the right call. So they well, are smart, smart well, enough to know the difference between right. the right call and, and doing how it the we wrong did way. it. And I think that's where he's getting so much criticism from Democrats and certainly independents who are saying, 
yeah, we're for this. We don't, 20 years is enough of this, but let's talk about who's left behind. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how quickly this happened. We didn't need to be out by September 11th. It's an incredibly important day in American history, mm -hmm. but it's not the be all and end all if people are scared of a new terror attack or we have, you know, potentially Lost tens lives. of thousands of people, people who were promised a new life here in America for helping us. Well, and in the way that you talk about that, that gets to sort of this headline with ABC and Washington Post, their poll they had out today. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of great news uh, for the president. And so Good Morning America spent, according to the Media Research Center, 30 seconds on the entire poll. It's their poll. And then the Washington <laughs> Post headline was American support withdraw, not the way it was done. So, again, it gets back to that conversation that we know most people were ready to go. But that's how they're framing these negative numbers for the president. Uh, they are framing up. So the, the polls, to your point, the polls are a call to action for the media that they got to jump in and help Joe Biden because they're going to ignore the stories that need to be covered. And like Don Lemon and Chris Hayes, they're going to start trying to rewrite history now. These grifters pawned off this defective human H-bomb to the American people. And more and more, we want to give them back. The, uh, they, are, they actively and in sometimes unethically got Joe Biden elected. Remember the Hunter Biden laptop and the 50 senior intelligence officers who said that it was Russian disinformation? Do they still have jobs? Because maybe their employers ought to rethink that. This country right now looks like an exploding septic tank. And these media con artists, uh, this is what they said would happen under a uh, second term for President Trump. Right. The, it, it goes to the point, and I say this over and over again, policy is more important than personality. That a flawed person with good policies has a much better impact on the nation. And Jessica, you said Joe Biden was consistent, I would say consistently terrible when it came to foreign policy. A again, he was against the raid that took out Osama bin Laden. And, in and he stands up over and over and over again and lies to the American people. So please do not spit in our faces and tell us it's raining. He was, he was against we the know surge better. as well. Yeah, he was. And, 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 and the, the mission to take out the Bin Laden. Only, the, the surge was the single most effective thing we did in the entire 20-year war. We have pushed the Taliban out of Afghanistan twice. We did it in 2001. We did it again in 2009, 10, 11, 10 when I was there, 11 when we had the most troops there, the deadliest time in the war. He was, he was vice president for eight years of this war, and you want to stand there and tell me you inherited? You're probably the only president that did not inherit this war because you were in charge of a large portion right. of it as the number two in command for eight years of it. You could at least argue George W. Bush Bush got handed a raw deal from uh, uh, from his predecessor who had a chance to, to kill bin Laden multiple times. But Joy and I were talking about this before the show, and we, I, I supported the withdrawal. I supported Trump saying, let's bring our troops home. But what does that mean? Right? Does that mean bringing every single last troop home? Or could have we had it's, still yeah. some presence in, in Bagram? Could we still offered air support to the uh, Afghani troops to, to push back the Taliban? I mean, we didn't have we didn't need Joey Jones guys on the ground fighting the Taliban, but we could have had a presence that could have helped us secure Afghanistan, make sure the Taliban doesn't take over, and we don't have to, uh, the Af Afghanistan but that's been, as a platform well, listen, to grow terrorists well, to right. move around the world. That's been the mission since 2014. It was a counterterrorism operation, but, but we have lost. No, but, we have no CIA listing <laughs> post. We have nobody on the ground that's, gathering that, intelligence. That's part of the problem. Well, and now we've blown up partnerships with people who may have trusted us to feed us information. And, well, and we've I mean, blown why up, should they? And we've blown up our relationship yeah. with Britain and Germany and <laughs> France. I, yeah. we, it is, but these it, are the adults in the room. These are going to be the, the ones that get respect around the world, right? When, when Joe Biden came into office, au contraire. As we were told.